I, I did see the dirty play by the Saints players. You know, I'm going to say it one more time before I bring Angelo Cataldi on with us. Um, that was 60 minutes of football that the Eagles have played, and that's the best ball they've played since Miami of last year. Okay? I can't believe for over 40 years, Angelo had to sit here and throw saltpeter on many of you Eagle fans by going crazy, by going, Hurts is back. The teams are sitting. You're like, pipe down here. Angelo knows as well as anybody. This is a building block game. Hey, don't not be excited about it. No one's saying that. But again, I'm not looking at the record. I'm looking how you're playing, like Kansas City last year. Not playing great at the beginning of the year. Started playing championship football at the end of the year. And by the way, one thing about Angelo and I, unlike what you've seen over at that um, that WHIP, because I call it wipe your you-know-what now, not really just the great legendary station, the very first sports station, by the way, in America was that thing, and Angelo was part of that, because they're going to wipe all your asses from uh, dusk to dawn. And not tell you this, hey, this is a great stepping stone here. It It really is. And here's the other thing. Call screener will do this to Angelo. Well, no, not Angelo, but to these guys. I'm sorry, you can't be negative towards the um, organization or the team here or the host because the host made a statement. No, no. To me, and Angelo, that's great radio. Okay, that's what makes great radio. I don't want yes men on my show. That's where I got it from. By the way, this is a, this is where I get it from. And also his phenomenal blog. Angelo Cataldi did what I did. I said nine wins. Angelo said five. I got this text. Hold on for a second here. I got this text all, and my, my Twitter blew up. They're going, Angelo, he's hiding under a rock. I'm like, no, he's if he's anything, he's hiding under a plate of gobbledeals right now. That's all he's doing. He's not hiding anywhere. Without further ado, we bring in our friend, the Godfather. A right. Philadelphia sports talk and sports talk in general. Angelo Cataldi, how you doing, Angie? Dan, first of all, I would like to be referred to as human salt Peter from now on because I tend to just ruin everybody's excitement. And uh, secondly, uh, those people, I have never, there's one thing I will never do. I will never hide. All right. I will never hide. I was actually hoping you would invite me on this week so I could tell everybody that I'm an idiot because I said five wins and after seven games, they got five wins. I'm an idiot. I agree with you. However, <laughs> it was my job for all those years and I still do it now to analyze what I'm seeing. And I saw a lot of great stuff. You're right. Best game in a long time yesterday. Hallelujah to that. Now let's do it against a really good team. Then I'm buying it. Now I'm not saying they won't. Dan, here's the thing. I, I kind of try to analyze how I was so wrong to think they were going to be terrible the whole year. And I was basically swept up by the last seven games of last season. When they played a good team after good team after good team and went deeper and deeper into the hole. It's weird, but I think what we're seeing right now is the exact opposite of that. They're playing teams they can handle, and they're building up confidence. The Browns are brutal, especially with Deshaun Watson with the car. They, they, they took care of them. Then they bludgeoned the Giants, who are an embarrassment. And yesterday, far better offense than they've seen in a while. And they handled it. Not right away. <laughs> took 10 minutes to figure out what Joe Burrow was going to do. But they handled it. And I think... Sometimes the, the schedule maker is one of your best friends, and they're building up a confidence now that could lead to some good things. And, you know, that's what I'm hoping for. Every time that kickoff starts, let everybody know this, regardless of what dumbass prediction I've made, I want them to win. You know why? Because my family wants them to win, because the city wants them to win, because it's a better place to live when they win. And when they win like yesterday, that's the best way. Because you don't even have to sweat it. By the fourth quarter, you're checking the Red Zone channel to see some of the incredible finishes 
that happened in the NFL yesterday. What a show they put up. Absolutely. A- Angelo, let me let me throw this at you here since the bye. And you tell me, I think what they've done, and I go by three games because to me that's what a trend becomes. And like you said, that's a building and stepping stone towards the rest of the season, and it's a great stepping stone. I don't want anybody not to be excited about that win yesterday right. because it was 50 minutes of domination. Okay. But you're not. I'm not going to sit here, and I don't think you are, and I'm not speaking for you, but ever since the Miami game, I'm not going to go a year and a half of bad ball and go, you're back. I want to see this on a continual basis, and I think they've come to this conclusion because of Barkley. You tell me this. He's trending right now to throw for 37-50, 19 touchdowns, 10 picks. And, again, those aren't phenomenal numbers. However, what you're seeing the last three weeks is this, Angelo. The first two weeks, he threw 35 times, 36 times. And in the last three weeks, they've thrown the ball 20, 14, and 25. This is since the bye. Do you think they've downsized him on being a guy not to have the high turnovers, but because Barkley now, and they're running the ball 40 times a football game, they've come to the formula now where they're doing this. Well, let's take those interception opportunities and turnover opportunities away from Hertz and the play calling or his delivery. It looks like they've downsized him and he's more effective like this with less is more. This is the this is why we get so frustrated with the Eagles. All right. Do you know how many years the fans have been saying, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball? You've had a great offensive line for years. The linemen themselves have gone public. Let's run it more. I, I Look, Saquon Barkley's terrific. I'm watching DeAndre Swift yesterday. He's great, too. He's great, too. Use them more. When they finally did it the last three weeks, much better results. I'm not going to say they consciously downsized Hurts. I think they understood finally, or I'll say Kellen Moore understood finally, that the best way to use him is to do exactly what he did yesterday. He was strong in the pocket. He was great outside the pocket. He was under control the whole time. He wasn't running for his life because they kept him honest with the running game. And it was it was phenomenal. When you've got a weapon like Barkley and you're paying him that kind of money, do exactly what you did the last few weeks, and you're probably going to do well. You should do well. Now, I still have serious doubts about the defense, and I'm the only one who does that because there's numbers out saying they've been incredibly dominant. Uh, they were dominant for, after the first drive yesterday. They were really good. I want to see a lot more of it before I believe it. I still think they're vulnerable to a good offense, and that part of it I want to see. Although i got to say, that tip play where they oh. tipped it, uh, Rodgers tipped it to yep. uh, Johnson, and they, yep. oh, yep. what great. Do you think they practice that then? Oh, they t- they practice trip they they practice tip drills, but I thought Jamar Chase quit on the play too. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. But it was a great play. It was a great play, and you know, it's just great to see receivers downfield who aren't wide open because we saw a ton of that at the end of last year. So I'm thrilled. I hope it keeps going. I expect that my my now my new prediction is the Eagles will win next week. And then everyone in Philadelphia will get a buzz cut because uh, Sirianni's head is 4-0 and all since he got the buzz cut. And I th- I'll tell you what, Dan, you wouldn't look too bad in it either. Uh, I think no. that might be nice. Get out no, well, I got too many scars. And, uh, my, my neck is too fat, and I would look like I belonged in a prison yard Well, <laughs> well with, with that. So, no, that's not going to cut it for me here. But, hey, how, how, how about this, though, Angelo? How much do you think that Barkley has forced the hand of them to be able to so say, hey, look, we're going to get killed here. If this guy only has 10 carries or five carries yeah. that come Monday, if they end up losing this ball game, and the way that he's played, you could make an argument. He's in the top 10 conversations for most valuable player this year with the way that he's run the ball that they just said, we have to get both of these guys or the three of them involved, A.J., Hurts, mm-hmm. and they have to get Barkley involved. I think he's kind of – I think he's kind of forced their hand a little bit. Well, I hope he has. I know this. Nobody before him did. I was right. the guy on Mondays who talked to the coach every week. And we actually had a sound that we played all the time. 
It was Meryl screaming, run the ball, run the ball. And I would play it for Sirianni. And I would go, Nick, have you considered this game plan? And then I just play run the ball. And he would go, oh, we run it. We run it plenty. But, you know, you have to tell by what the situation dictates. Bull crap. All right. You got a good runner. You got a good line. Run the ball. It's how you control the clock and you control the game. And it makes Hurts a lot better. So just keep doing this. Now, you know what? That, that's why I don't think Sirianni is making these calls. I think Keller Moore came around to it. He said, you know what? We only ran them when they were still losing before the bye. They weren't running them enough. And they finally looked at it and went, we got a $40 million running back. Let's use him. Let's take advantage of, of how he can handle the game. And then they did. And now you're seeing the result. That's what I'm seeing. Here's, here's a comment that you made a couple minutes ago that I think kind of goes to your point here. You went, well, this is the first really good offense that they've faced. Well, they haven't really faced a really great team yet that's going to be able to stop what you're saying because let's say, let, let's look at that number there. On third down, they did give up to the Bengals. The Bengals went 10 of 13. Well, if you have a football team on the other side that has an elite defense that can stop people, especially as you get closer to the playoffs, that's where you're going to get into a problem like that when you go into a complete team. That was the best offense that they have played. But the deficiency that Cincinnati has, in my opinion, Angelo, was that they couldn't run the ball. They ran it for 60 yards. I think getting off of Joe Mixon was an absolute nightmare for them of a year ago. The guy was a 1,000-yard rusher, and they moved off of him. And I think they miscalculated that. They couldn't get anything going, which meant play action. Then on the other hand, their defense – couldn't stop running water yesterday. So, I mean, when you play a team like Baltimore coming up, that's probably going to be the benchmark test of all these teams. But I do think they are doing this, not to throw water on anything here, but I do think they're building equity up with, like you said, confidence with these type of games. It helps. It helps a lot. I think it's going to be, you know, I had a real opportunity last Friday. Um, I had lunch with uh, um, the men in the Philadelphia media that I have always respected the most. The man I think who is the most knowledgeable, most even-handed, and who knows more football than a lot of football people, Ray Dittinger. And I said, Ray, tell me about this game Sunday. And he said, well, here's much I'll tell you. Cincinnati's lines are not very good. The Eagles should be able to take control of the game because their lines are better. And that's what I saw in the game. I, Cincinnati can't run block. Or they got nothing and they're running nothing. it. Nothing. So that makes it a lot easier to cover the pass. So that helped them somewhat, but not on the first drive. I'm still trying to understand what they do just before they come out from the locker room. Ten minutes. 17 plays there. Right down the field. Every third down was executed beautifully by Burrow. And then, uh, to their credit, the Eagles the next forty-eight minutes held them to ten points. That was a that I didn't see that coming. I thought it was going to be a shootout at that point. I knew the Eagles were going to score because Cincinnati's defensive line is lousy. You're going to, I either agree or disagree with me. And the reason why now again it was different yesterday because, like you just said, that's that 17 play drive to open up. They really didn't have a lot of time. I think they had like 10 minutes to try to score some points, but on the first drive, they did get a field goal, but you tell me if you agree or disagree that first sequence of plays, the first 25 Angelo offensive coordinator, the head coach, Musmeyer, Jalen hurts all sit down all week long and they come up with the first 25 plays. And in my opinion, this is where Nick Sirianni's incompetence sticks out because what has been the worst part of the Eagle offensive attack has That's been great. the first 25 plays, which has not resulted in any points. And once they get off that script, <laughs> they're better when they start in-game adjustment. Tell me I'm crazy when I see that, that the first 25 plays are more where Nick is. And once they get off that, Angelo, that's when they get better when they're not in Nick Sirianni's playbook. Am I wrong? Dan. I'm, I'm in awe right now. I have found someone more <laughs> cynical than I am. You have broken it down to find a new way to rip Sirianni 
after a 20 point victory. <laughs> that is not easy. <laughs> the, the, I'm surprised you don't have a hernia. No, I don't disagree with you. I, <laughs> anything that happens with the Eagles, and this is my fault, I'm the guy with five wins for the year. Anything that happens good with the Eagles, I assume it happened despite Sirianni, not because of it. I have spoken to him many times. I do not think he is a brilliant football mind. So when something good's happening, I go, oh, Kellen Moore's got it going on. Fangio adjusted beautifully yesterday. Yes. What did Sirianni do? Yeah, what he usually does, walked up and down the sideline and once in a while got a little camera time and didn't appear to have any bearing on what was going on in the game. That's the way I look at it. That may be the best formula. Don't even script the first plays with Sirianni. I, I give him, you know, like a, a give him a gift card to McDonald's or something. Keep him out of the area. Let, let the guys that know football do the football. That's the way I see it. But again, that may just be insanely cynical. But I don't have to worry anymore. There's a new kin of the kin of the cynics. It's Dan Celia. Hold on. Well, wait a minute. The first 25 plays of every game for the Eagles no. suck. Right. And he says it's a collaborative thing. When we put the play sheet together, they haven't scored a point. There's only one guy that yeah. I can lay that on. It's yeah. got to be the head coach. I, I can't so. lay it on the OC because the OC has now looked like we just said, running the ball more. They're de- but by the way, Barkley doesn't get going until after the first 25. Right. No, uh, Sirianni has had screaming matches with fans who are demanding they run the ball more. He doesn't like running the ball. He was a receiver in college. He loves the, the forward pass. Um, so I don't think this is him. <laughs> I, uh, think, uh, hey. I think it's Kellen Moore. And it, maybe the bosses are say to Sirianni, Nick, now that you've got the buzz cut, Get a little more <laughs> camera time. That thing's going to really connect with the people and stay out of the actual coach. The bald eagle strikes again. Okay. <laughs> 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 Do you think he ends up costing them, though, in a critical moment this year? I still fully expect that when they play good teams, they're going to get smushed. I, I may be wrong. I want to be wrong. When I sit down, I'm excited for the game. I There's nothing in my life more exciting to be right now than watching a football game, especially with the Eagles. But I still don't have any faith. I don't have any faith. And you know what else? The gods may be against them because I'm sitting there watching. Yeah, I'm watching the end of the Washington game with the Bears, right? Yeah. And I, because I'm a mathematical wizard, I'm going, oh, Eagles are five and two. Right? Uh, the commanders are about to lose. Yeah. Eagles are going to be in first, first place. place. And then that play happened. <laughs> ah! Oh, that was <laughs> the only time I screamed yesterday was when that ball landed was in a Moore's hands. I just, yeah. I couldn't believe how badly the Bears handled. The, the Hail Mary. And I'll tell you what else. Let happened. him get behind him. Why? It's a cardinal, yeah. cardinal rule. Don't let him let a guy get behind you. Oh, no, no. There's a profound thing that happened right in that moment in Philadelphia that I can address that I don't know if anybody else realizes. I can only address it because of all the email I got. When that landed in the commander's hands and they won the game, the whole city had a flashback. To Super Bowl 52, when Tom Brady put it up and it went in the end zone. And that ball, Dan, it wasn't that far away from a Patriot. There were Patriots all over the place down there. And people emailed me and went, Oh my God, that could have happened to us. We may still not have a Super Bowl. <laughs> so many people reacted that way. It was how incredible. About, how about this one, Angelo, for me? So I walk into a locker room. A guy goes like this to me. How do you feel about losing the game? And I go, no, we won. He goes, no, Flutie's pass was caught. I'm like, what? We had all walked off the field in that oh. Hail Mary. We had no coaches, no nothing. And we just turned and walked and started walking in after the Flutie Hail Mary. Wow. And no one knew what had happened. Jimmy didn't have any coaches, didn't have a defense called. 
Fanling catches the pass in the back of the end zone. So I've had a Hail Mary happen to our program like that. And so when somebody pointed it out to me, I'm like, oh, he swatted down. That's why I was saying about that ball with Jamar Chase yesterday when Gardner Johnson got it, that he quit on it. You got to get that ball on the ground like that. When that guy did that tip, I said, look out. Sure enough, touchdown in the back of the end zone. And now you have Washington. By the way, I think Washington, I picked them, by the way, Angelo, at the beginning of the year, one of my bold predictions, I picked that they would win the NFC East. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, they're up uh, half a game here. I got, you know, I haven't criticized that. Can I just criticize Tracy Wolfson for a second? Because she yeah. was on the side after the game, and she gets to talk to Daniels right after the game. Don't you ask a quarterback if it ever happened to him before? Of course. First question you out of your mind. throw a Hail Mary that worked. Yeah. Yeah. She asked three stupid questions and never <laughs> asked them. Hey, Jalen, have you ever – has that ever happened to you? Because he threw it 65 65- Yards in Unbelievable. The in the air. In the air. And it still was maybe two or three yards yeah. short of the goal line yeah. until, until that jackass who was tr- tripping with the fans. Unbelievable. It up, right? But I, look, I went, ask him if he ever did it before. Because the greatest quarterbacks never got even one that won, yeah. right? Right, right. That right. was, oh, that's why I love sports. That moment. Is why I'll always watch sports and love it because it was just incredible. And it wasn't what I wanted to happen. I wanted them to lose. Yeah. I wanted the Eagles to be in first place. But you had to admire the execution by that rookie and the stupidity of the Bears and the dumbass questions after by the sideline reporter whose only job is to get the question (laughs) right. Come on. Let's do it. Oh, my God, Angelo. A couple last ones here for you. Um, Are you buying what Vic's doing on that defensive side? I'll tell you what, Angelo. That Cooper DeGene kid? Yeah. Man, wow. I like him, man. Yes. He looks like a ball player. And he, You know, he runs to the ball. He tracks well. He tackles well. Personally, I think the only reason he didn't go in the first round is because he's a white corner. But outside of that, this guy's got first-round ability all over him. He is quite a ball player. And the other kid, too, Quinion Mitchell, that yes. they drafted look like players. Are you buying some of these younger dudes? Yes. I am totally on board with both those guys. And, and this has kept Avante Maddox healthy because he doesn't play anymore. That's the <laughs> best way to preserve his health. But seriously, wow, especially Dijon. I can't believe how he's, he's right around the ball all the time. Yeah. He's really, really smart out there. And he's playing great football. And the linebackers are giving you more now. You're Nicobe. getting more out of linebackers. N'Kobe Dean, that Zach Vaughn kid. Yep. Everybody, after two black years filled with injuries, most people are checked out on Dean. Yeah. Now you're watching him and you go, whoa, yeah. he is good. He's going to be, you know, that part of it I agree with. Will it all come together? Will they have enough of a pass rush? against the good quarterbacks that I want to see. But they took care of Burrow after the first 12 minutes. I give him full credit of that. All right, Angelo, I've got it. You know, this is all football here, and I got to ask you this, man. Come on, man. Have you ever covered a softer guy in your life than Joel Embiid? It's – I mean, for that city to have him, it's kind of – I mean, Ben Simmons, I know what you had there, but, I mean, this guy is just – I mean, I don't get it. It's it, it's worse than that. It's consumer fraud. What you're seeing right now in Philadelphia with the Sixers is consumer fraud. As they attempt to blackmail the city into being part of a new arena in Chinatown. Do you know how many people buy the opening game tickets just because it's the opening game? 90, it's the one game. Yep. It's the one game where you know you're going to get the star players. And all right. George is hurt. He's hurt. Can't do anything about it. Knee management? Before you play the game, we're managing his left knee? This is consumer fraud. Those people paid a lot of money to see Joel Embiid, and they saw garbage, right? And, And seriously, if the city is an outrage, if you're not angry about what is going on with the Sixers and Embiid, if the, the, the Sixers may as well have issued a statement 
which is um, we don't think the regular season means a damn thing. And our only goal in this whole 82-game season is to have a healthy Joel Embiid for the playoffs. See you in April. I mean, that's really what it is. Anyone who's buying a ticket through the next six months is just wasting their money because they don't even know if they're getting the product. Without Embiid, what do you see it? You see nothing. It, you're, you're not seeing the guy. He's the guy. And, but no, Angel, he, and he's on board. He's but if, okay you're, with this. if you're selling me that, then, oh. then why should I why should I give you and vote for an arena for you if the regular season doesn't matter? You mean to tell me I'm voting for arena so that you can get Taylor Swift in there? Or that you can get a um, a Republican or Democratic convention inside there, so that you can have other events for Josh Harris to be able to increase his net wealth. Is that why I'm doing that? Because you're taking advantage of my civic pride of right. what I have for my sports teams if we're doing that. And exactly. someone will go like this to me: "Well, Sills, that's kind of like rainbows and butterflies." I'm like, "Well, when I see the tickets for NBA tickets as the highest at seventy five dollars a ticket, that's not rainbows and butterflies." When you're asking me to pay the freight. Like the NFL for three hundred fifty dollars a ticket. Hey, you're asking me to put a small investment in here. I don't have disposable income like that. I think that's really over the top of Josh Harris and that group to do that, right. especially down trying to bring, create a new arena like that. And they don't care about the regular season. Josh Harris, I, I, I'm going to bring this all the way back around to our original topic. Josh Harris apparently doesn't go to enough games. You go to the opening game. And you see a dad with his son or a mom with her daughter with an Embiid jersey on. They, they love Joel Embiid. He's the star of the team. They paid money to see their star. And they didn't get to see him because you're managing his knee. Not acceptable. Not acceptable. And that is the worst thing about what happened yesterday with the, the Hail Mary. Because they had shown... Josh Harris on the yep, side. He's also the owner of the commanders. And when they got, they executed the Hail Mary, it made him happy. And when Joshua Harris is happy, I'm despondent. I am unhappy because he is a carpetbagger. And he is exactly what is wrong with owners today in sports. No doubt. I My, my problem with him in Philly is that, wait a minute here, you're cheering like that against a division foe. Are you going to roll in to Lincoln Financial when the commanders come in? And are you cheering for the commanders against the city of Philadelphia yeah. so that then you're going to jump and you don't go to one of Sixer games and right. you're asking me to give you an arena? I'm a little confused here on you, guy. No, he won't or, be there. Are you, so you're not, there. you can't be a civic, you can't be a civic leader in Philadelphia and act like that when you're cheering on the sidelines and then you're telling me I'm not going to put a star player out in bead for the opener and tell me I want to build you an arena. You're double talking and you're a fraud. This is what I love about Philadelphia. Joshua Harris can show his face in Washington all he wants. Yeah. He's best off not doing it in his own city here because if they put his face up at a Sixers game on the video, on the, uh, uh, they would boo him. He would get booed big. I, he would get booed. And if they, if he showed up at, at the link to cheer on his commanders, oh my God. Yeah. he's security with you because the <laughs> fans are not going to want to see that. <laughs> Absolutely it. not here. Angelo, how's the book doing? Book is doing great. Audio book is doing great. And we had our premiere for the Wing Bowl documentary at How'd the that go? Film Festival. It was a sellout. It was a spectacular event last uh, Tuesday night, and um, we turned the clock back. It was like our biggest event was back up and running. And uh, it, when it comes out, it will be out somewhere, someone. I will let you guys know. It Please. is great. It is. It got. It may win the festival. How great would that be, Angelo? I've been to three of those. You those did. Things, okay. oh my, I've been to big. Well. Tony Bruno gave me kind of a little because I worked with Tony. Right. And well, WIP used to go up to Stanford and used to go up the East Coast when I was a young kid. And we come down to Wildwood and I we would listen because if people don't remember 86, WIP was the first 24-7 sports radio station. It wasn't FAN, it was WIP first. So we would hear, and Angel, am I right? It was 610 
back in the day. Yeah. Six ten, and it went all the way up, almost south of New Haven. It went it was a, like a clear channel all the way up to the top. And so we would come down to Philadelphia for that that wing bowl, and it used to be at the Spectrum. And so they had we we went to three of those. And it was some of the greatest time I've ever seen in my entire life when I was younger. Tony Bruno goes, oh, my God, we had I have pictures with Bruno when I was a kid because he was involved in all of that. What an absolutely great event. And obviously, probably because of the um, the woke media of today or what have you, that that thing probably got taken away because yeah. of David Fields and all that. Wow. OK, but that was such a great event back in the day, man. I really that was a staple to the station, too. Dan, you got to see the film. Oh, I can't wait. It's called No One Died. <laughs> no one did. We I saw a lot of people died. hammered there, I'll tell you that. That's it. We thought one of them would have died. None yeah. of them died. It was, yeah. a, it was a miracle. 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 Absolutely. Angela, <laughs> tell the folks how where they can find your blog, too. It's sensational. You oh, write yeah. Every uh, week, too. Every week I do write. It's at angelocataldi.com. Uh, and uh, just check it out anytime you want, and uh, you'll be able to see all the latest stuff and all of my opinions, including my highly faulty predictions. <laughs> <That's really bad. laughs> this one could be an all-timer. What if oh. they win 12? Do oh. I even show my face again? <laughs> hey, God forbid they win 13 games. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you hey, you that'll be the that'll be the happiest worst take. And Angelo Cataldi's career yeah. will be that one right there. Among many others, though. <laughs> but the <laughs> worst one. You're right. <laughs> Absolutely. Angelo, thank you, my friend. I appreciate you, it. And you that's great. Angelo Cataldi, we lo so love having him on with us. Please hit the like button. Don't forget, at the bottom of the hour at 430, our friend Xander Krause will join us. I think that's right. Yes, Xander's joining us at 430. Gary Cobb is going to join us. At five o'clock, we have a ton of people in here right now. Please tell me this where are we on the likes? I would like to know. By the way, super chats have been through the roof. We have over a thousand people watching us on the Twitter, X, and also here on our YouTube. 450 likes we have. And get this we still got two hours left. How you doing? Let's see if we can get this thing past 550. How about that, Xander? 550? We should get the 550 here. Great show, always. Hey, always sunny. I'm, you know, maybe in the first hour, what I did was I didn't do it enough to make sure that I made it clear. I'm not saying you shouldn't be happy and have great takeaways from it. I'm I'm, I'm not. I'm not even really saying pump the brakes. I'm just saying, don't you want to see it again? Oh, wait a minute here. Timbo, let me tell you something, hon. You're my girl. Your takes are always wanted here, okay? And by the way, Kim, I don't put you on because you're a chick. I put you on because you're a sports, you're, you're a sports fan, okay? I don't, I don't treat women like that. No one here does. You get put right up there because you're a sports chick. Sports chicks and sports dudes. That's nothing to do. Hey, my boobs are probably bigger than yours. <laughs> hey, it's all good, hon. Okay. Sills, did you see the electric game on World Series? Oh, my God. Electric game one. How about two? The way uh, Ice Cube came out in, uh, in game two, too, man. That was awesome. Hey, Kim, I probably got bigger tits than you. How you doing? Hit the like button. Okay, hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.